Halen. Shazam! Ah! <laughs> so 50 years ago, yeah. the character of Shazam debuted yeah, in comic me, books. Tell me a little bit about the character of Shazam. Oh, you're asking the wrong person. I'm just, <laughs> I know I am. That's why I said it. <laughs> I'm just dropping facts. But, but you know, the the character of Shazam... Well, I can tell you this much. character of Shazam's original name, Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. Yep. There's a great episode of Geek History Lesson podcast where that dives for like a full hour into the entire awkward pub- publication history awesome. of this character. So I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, check that out. It's a great deep dive. Um, but yes, about, what was it, 2019? So almost we're getting close to five years ago, which yeah. is weird to say. Shazam debuted. You know, DC is a rocky, <laughs> rocky film company. <laughs> That's that, Is that a pun intended? No. <laughs> oh, the rock? Yeah, I know. The rock shows up. <laughs> so I've... I've had this theory about DC. Yeah. Which is the less faith it feels like DC has in a movie, the better the overall product is. And I feel like the first Wonder Woman movie, they didn't expect anything. So they didn't get too hands on with it. And it turned out pretty great. Yeah, I thought it was okay. Shazam, same situation. I think that they thought no one's going to give a fuck about this movie. And they kind of just let the director make what ended up being a admittedly long very enjoyable movie. This movie is probably the only DC film that I think captures what made so many of the MCU movies enjoyable. Like it's sweet, it's funny, so, it's 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 not it's a nice blend of things. I will say that in the midst of rewatching this last night, mm-hmm. I literally looked at Teddy and I said, and this is this, I don't think this is the fault of this movie yeah. at all. I looked at her and I said this is coming from a comic book reader, an yeah. avid comic book reader. I am so over this superhero bullshit. Yeah, no, I, I mean, just can't do it anymore. I'm I, still burnt no, out. No, I, I feel you, and and I'm trying to. Uh, when I watched this movie, I watched it through the lens of when I saw it for the first time. I okay, saw it in theaters, yeah. and I definitely thought it was a fresh breath of fresh air yeah. for the DC universe. I also one of the notes I wrote down. I think that this is the most charming origin story movie we've gotten since the original spider-man in 2001 i can get behind that i and i think i I, there i agree with you i am i am at an an exhaustion level on all of it but there's something about this movie that works and i think what works is that all of the characters are just so likable yeah like you could take out all the superhero stuff Mm -hmm. I just want to hang out with this yeah. family. That family's awesome. That's what I that, mean. It's the, like the and, foster dad and foster mom. Dude, it's two it's, of my favorite characters. It's so heartwarming. Freddie is so like I love yeah. Freddie in this movie, and that's and th- honestly, the movie works best when it's not a superhero movie. Yeah, I agree. L- like when it's a foster family hangout, and it's also kind of where it feels the most Christmassy. Then that's another thing is like when we got to the ending where we're in the Christmas village. I was yeah. like. Oh, that's why I'm watching this. <laughs> Look, there's a couple of reasons why we're watching this. First of all, yeah, Shazam anniversary. Shazam. No, 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 no. I was just like, secondly, this is a Christmas we, movie. we we needed something that wasn't. Look, we weren't. We don't have it in us to be like, hey, let's sit down and watch fucking. I don't know. Let it snow again. Like I just, I can't. I can't do something like that. This is perfect. It no, takes place fine. around Christmas time, but it's not Christmas. I'm not. Shit. You don't have How to. How def- dare you? You don't have to defend this. No, I was I, just saying, like it, it, because I feel like people do call this like a like this is a Christmas movie. I would say Iron Man three is more Christmassy. Ooh, than... I was going to actually say that. Really? I thought that this was more successfully Christmassy. Okay. Um. What if what if we just we're gonna just agree to disagree? I think that's one. the better that'll make or, a better episode. Or in my in my opinion, honestly, they probably hold the same amount of Christmas. No, because here's my thing. There's a Christmas village at the end of this one. No, I wouldn't even say that. Like, I I think that Christmas, the spirit of Christmas, is in this movie. The spirit, the family, of, the family, the spirit yeah. of Christmas is in this movie, and also. The supervillain's origin story starts with a 
fucked up Christmas experience <laughs> too. True. It's a very Silent Night, Deadly it's Night a very, style. Dude, I literally <laughs> wrote. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I wrote down this kid has got to be having one of the top five worst Christmases of all time. <laughs> like, like it is a horrible Christmas. Dude, but, could you imagine? I can't imagine being that kid who like you're out as you just got sucked into this world that's going to save you. Like that's your out, and just because some gargoyles fucked with you. <laughs> And we're like, grab this ball. You, He's like, all right. A credit where credits do. The fucking car. Yeah, credit where credits do. There has never been, in my memory, a more compelling villain villain origin story. Where I'm like, nope, same. I think I would go this exact <laughs> yeah, same route. I agree. <laughs> like seriously, just because I was a kid being a kid and was like, yeah. oh, shiny ball. You're like, you're not worthy, and send you back to your abusive father and brother. But also the the other thing about what this movie fuck? that I like a lot is that it is it's undeniably a lighthearted yes. warm movie but then you get shit like that boardroom scene that is fucking yeah. gnarly Which is, and it's 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 like it is borderline dogma levels of, it, it, it's of what the, I think of I literally yeah. think of dogma yeah like it is fucked up in yeah. that scene when, I even said that as we were watching it I was like everyone else in that room beside his dad's like Dude, I don't even know you. Like- <laughs> Dude, when that thing bites a dude's head off, yeah. I was just like, whoa. <laughs> I could not. And like, I've seen this before, but holy shit. Yeah. Now, I do think that the movie lulls in the center. Yeah. I think that the starting is beautiful. I, I love how sad the story is of him trying to find his mom. That that whole through line of him coming to the realization that his mom doesn't fucking want him. It's so fucking wild. It's so heavy. It's so devastating. And I also like the caseworker who says yeah, the same just like, thing. Who's like, bro, you have people who do want you. Yeah. And it's like a very you're much- chasing it's, it's down very someone much, who doesn't. Exactly. It's yeah. a very reality check, tough love. You're, he, she's like- I care about you, and there's other people that want to care about you, and you are chasing somebody who doesn't want you. Yeah, it's but again, I just I think that this is when this movie came out. I remember it caught a lot of people off guard. Yeah, because again, I, I feel like I'm really harping on DC. DC just doesn't have I a good think, track record. So, and that was my problem was what I saw this. And everybody was like, that movie was fucking amazing. Yeah. But what I think people saw was that movie was unlike the other DC yeah. movies. <laughs> so when I watched it, I was like, that was okay. Yeah. Like, that was all right. But I, I think comparatively it. to like everything else yeah. that they put out, because again, Which is even- wild, because I do, I will go on the record as saying I liked Batman v Superman. <laughs> Oh, I, I was going to say, yeah, I like the Batman also, but you're talking about Batman <laughs> be Superman I slightly did. different. I saw that. That's fine. Whatever, yeah. Martha. But like. <laughs> That's okay. Like a lot I've of other shit. I've actually never seen it. I've really? actually never seen it. So I can't say anything. So um, I'm not going to. I am not like a Snyderverse freak. Like, I don't give a shit. I didn't see the Snyder cut of Justice League. I didn't see the Whedon cut of Justice yeah. League. But I did like. I liked Batman v Superman, but I think it's honestly just because I really liked Batfleck. I think I, look, I think Ben Affleck is a great Bruce Wayne. Having seen none of those movies, I'm sure he's great. Yeah, like I real like I remember when people were shitting on that. I'm like, look, if nothing else, the last ten years Ben Affleck has proven himself to be a very yeah. competent director and competent actor, mm-hmm. and this motherfucker knows that this is his one chance yep. to earn back the respect that he deserves. So whether this movie's great or bullshit. It will not be because of he, Ben Affleck's acting. He literally acting. does play. I know you're not a huge comic book reader, but he really is the Dark Knight Returns yeah. version of I, Batman. He's old man Bruce. Yeah. And Don't it's get me wrong. Awesome. I want to be a comic book. I, lo- I go through those waves. Yeah. It is just a financial burden oh, that dude, I am. You're not <laughs> fucking lying. Dude, there was a time when I was dropping fifty dollars a week. Yeah, same. 50, That's why I had to be like, I can't I cannot do this anymore. On on single issues. And I finally went back to trades and now I'm finally accepting that you know what, dude? You've got a fucking Kindle. Just yeah. please, just use that. I you don't I, have the room for this. I'll do the occasional trades, but yeah. I'll do trades when I'm like, hey, this is a completed story. Yeah. But like my problem was, and I think I've talked about this on the show before, at the time that I was really getting into comic books again, it was when Marvel specifically, but both of the the big two were having a problem where like they were doing these crossover storylines where if you wanted to know what the fuck was happening yeah. in your Spider-Man comic, you had to get like 
eight other issues of other books that have nothing to fucking do with Spider-Man to piece the shit together. And I was just like, this isn't fun. This is yeah. homework now. I jumped back into single issues comics around the... You might not know what this is, but if, if our listeners do, they'll understand. I jumped right back into comics around Hickman's Secret Wars, which was a sequel to or a sequel to his Avengers and Secret I think that's Avengers when I was runs. dipping out and it was because I jumped in during was, the Civil War okay yeah so and the problem with the Secret Wars was oh, no, Secret Invasion that's when I yeah, dipped out okay. the, the problem with the newest Secret Wars is that's how it was you had the Secret Wars books but then you also had Secret Wars Civil War 2 yeah. you had Secret Wars uh, fucking old man Logan. You if had you Secret bought, Wars, and I'm like, bro, I can't do this. And literally, if you like, if you went into my basement and looked through some of my long boxes, and you were yeah. like, oh, here's here's Secret Invasion one through eight. Yeah, you cannot read those in order no. and make any fucking yep. sense of it. So there's reading guides. That's yeah. I I do I I want to read Hickman's Avengers, but he wrote Avengers and Secret Avengers, and when you or not Secret Avengers, I can't remember what it is it's some alternative avengers group but when you read them like you got to have a fucking reading guide with you because you're like you got to read issue one and then issue three of this and then issue four of this look i'm going to throw in a second promo for my friend's podcast but geek history lesson is in all seriousness one of the best if you are someone who knows that you can't read comics but you want to be aware of what's happening in there they basically will do these hour to an hour and a half long episodes where they will just pick a single character and they will dive through all of the important beats of that character and publish stories and like literally just fill in the gaps and they'll be like, this is, this is what happened here. And right now they're doing the Batman and Superman, like golden age, silver age, like bronze age, like just walking you through like this are, these are the main stories you need to know. Yeah from this period of time. I mean, I need them to talk about the Kang, the conqueror stuff. Because, I'm sure. Well, they tie it into whatever's about to come out. They'll do I like need to breakdown. Know because like I thought Kang, the conqueror was Mr. Fantastic's son. So I'm like, how are we doing? He, he might, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, they're going to have to bend around some I need stuff. To know. But, I didn't even watch Loki. I, I need uh, to. God, I am so behind. on. It's everything. homework again, man. It's yeah, so dude. fucking siring. Like, I, I Sorry. We're not even it. talking about Shazam. I, I want to. So, so what I was going to say is the, the heartwarming family stuff is great. in Shazam. Yes. Agreed. He becomes Shazam like 30 minutes into the movie. Yeah. And it's, it's fun. Like Zach Levi is a great comedic performer. Yes. I actually saw not this year, but in 2001 uh, at LA comic con, Zach Levi's Q and A panel was right before the panel that Jonathan hosted, where he got engaged. Oh, nice! So I was there watching it, waiting because I was supposed to film the engagement from the yeah. back of the room. Um, and the a little story from behind the scenes was that Jonathan was actually supposed to moderate Zach Levi's Q and A. Okay, and he was going to ask ask Zach Levi to help him with the engagement. But yeah. before anything could even happen, Zach Levi was like, "I don't need a moderator," and he is correct. Yeah, <laughs> like, of course. Dude just like walks out on the stage full of confidence and is just straight up like, all right, who's got questions? And like just yeah. pointing to people and just like having fun. And you can just, you can feel the energy from him that like the person that you see in this movie that is so giddy and happy to like have these superpowers and do, like that's the guy. Okay. Like that is Zach Levi. Yeah. He is just happy to be part of like, these characters that he loves so very, very much. Yeah. Um, but there is like this lull in the story at that point where this... I'm not a big fan of... And this comes up at the end of the movie as well. I hate the... We're adult, we're adult actors playing adults who are actually kids. Like, I, I always... like Yes and no. That drives me fucking crazy. I really do love when the whole family becomes I, I like when it starts, but then I'm like... Okay, we get it. Yeah. You're a, you're a little girl. <laughs> like Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the hardest laugh in this whole movie though for me is towards the very end yeah. when they're flying in the sky and the villain is <laughs> like Oh, and they can't hear he each can't other. Hear, he's like I can't hear. I just see a mouth moving. Yeah. He's like, we're like we're like 200 feet away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Or do you have an already existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? 
Well, check out WeKnowPodcasting.com. From concept development to theme music to editing to logos, WeKnowPodcasting.com is a one-stop shop for all things pod. Don't hesitate to hit us up. We're very nice. I hate that I'm burned out on superheroes. Yeah, me too. I hate that I didn't think I'd ever get there. Because I really feel like, motherfucker... Do you know how much 15 year old you would love that there's this yeah, much? Co- yeah. Like, it sucks that I'm burned out on it. But I think that there is no more, there's never been a moment in a comic book movie since, I'm going to bring up Spider Man again, but since the train scene in Spider Man 2, yeah. that captures what it's like seeing these characters on the big screen, then the little kid playing with the toys and then seeing it happen. Yeah, that was it fucking is, cool. It's such, like, that. there's something about that scene that actually, like, it's not emotional, but it hits yeah. me in a way that I get like choked up for a second. Yeah. And I think it's because it does remind you of like where we came from. Yeah. When when we were 10, the only version of a superhero movie we were getting was what we made in our basement with it's our true. toys. So like and that, that's a phrase that is really strange. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like it's like, but that's that's seeing that come to life. Like a kid playing with his toys yeah. and then seeing the action happen. right in front of him. Yeah. Um well explain this to me. Okay. So, I'm not gonna be able to no, probably, no, no, but no 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 riddle me this Batman. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm we both just discussed we're really burnt out on superhero movies, right? Like, correct? We just yeah, but that. I'm still gonna fucking How, see. Yeah, all I'm still of gonna this see thing. them, but I'm really fucking excited for uh, Amazing Spider-Man Two or, or, or Spider Verse Two. Oh well, no, like Spider Verse. So, 2. like, explain to me why am I? Is, is it just the formula, like the 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 live action formula of them? It like, might what be is the live it? action formula. I think that also. <sighs> If you're a superhero fan and Spider Verse isn't in like your top five, I think it's number one. That's what I, I mean. Think it's it's number so one for it's me. so undeniably good. But I would love to watch that right after this. <laughs> yeah, you like it's it's one of like, those it's one of those movies that's like I could watch it a million times. Yeah, and it and it works and it's so different. And again, similar. I'm going to bring it back to Shazam. Similar to Shazam, kind of unceremoniously released with no expectation yeah Yeah. like that was one of those movies that like i felt like i was seeing the trailers for it like a month before it was coming out like it was just like out of nowhere it was this thing yeah and i mean just that but that is to me that has nothing to do with superhero or not yeah. That is Just my solid fucking. Well, movie. that's my faith in Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Yeah, those yeah. guys have not had a miss for me. Yeah, and I I can't remember if you've seen the Mitchells versus the Machines. Yes, yet. I finally watched it. Yeah, I think that amazing. that's another. I think that that. I like more than Spider Verse. Yeah. I think that they are just so good at a. I don't very know if I like it more than Spider Verse, but I'm with you. Like I'm. But they're so good at what they do yeah. that it's like I'm not even. And also, kind of not tied to the MCU, really. Yeah. Like it's very Agreed. much on its own island. Yep. And that's that's what I think we need. Like the best you and I have talked about this. Like, you know, uh, did you watch She Hulk? No. Okay. I like She Hulk a lot because it didn't feel like I had to do all of this homework yeah. to sit and watch it. Like it was its own little I think it goes back to like I'm tired of the discourse. Yes. Like it goes back to that because so I think WandaVision I, was fucking brilliant. Yeah. And I think the people that disliked WandaVision were creating something else in their, in their head. head. No, WandaVision is so <laughs> we're we're recording this now that phase four is over. And phase four is a Probably a big reason why we're burned out because it was not good. No, it was a lot of it was bad. Really fucking it was, weird. It was a lot of bad to mediocre movies. Yeah. And Phase Four, the TV shows were better than almost any of the movies, but there was yeah. such a stronger commitment that you had to put into yeah, them. Exactly. So like, it just Phase Four really hurt the MCU, and I hope I'm. I know I'm wrong. I do hope that they're like reassessing that yeah. trying to take a step back maybe only releasing one or two movies a year not yeah. like five a year yeah and like pacing it out because i think we all got fucking burned Dude, out by I the last two did. years and it's like so everything was a was building up to that one culminating story and <laughs> which was guardians of the galaxy holiday <laughs> special i guess yeah <laughs> no, no 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 i'm going back to Endgame. yeah yeah okay so <laughs> that's fucking funny though um and i think we were all like okay what happens next yeah well what happens next is 
two of these characters that you really love are either dead or retired and about to die. Yeah. <laughs> like, it really did eliminate half of your original crew in one fell swoop. Which, again, was fine if you were putting in the work to, like... To build up others. To, and I don't think they were. I don't think they took the time to build up... Now, we also can't fault them that probably one of the people that they were planning to make the spearhead... The actor passed away. I think that threw a huge fucking yeah. Because I think true. that they were really trying to set up Black Panther yeah, to be I think like Chadwick would have been like, like the the Iron Man. The thing. Yeah. yeah, like and I think that that caused a lot of issues. Yes, but like you're right. It's it's look, we're both wrestling fans. Yeah, and like the way that you make wrestling survive is that you do need some of those old mm-hmm. faithful characters. Yep. But if those old faithful characters aren't being used to elevate the next characters, yep. then eventually everyone's just going to get burnt out by mm-hmm. seeing the same shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually, I'm not sure if you heard the news story that recently came out that um, I think it was the 2001 rumble. The original plans literally up to the morning of was for Charlotte Flair to win instead of Bianca Belair. The 2021? 2020, I think so. Okay. Two, you th- said 2001. And I was, oh, sorry, like, yeah, no, no, sorry. I was like, Steve Austin, <laughs> Bianca Belair sorry. is going to be Steve Austin. Yeah, sorry, 2021. <laughs> okay. The 2021 Royal Rumble, it was supposed to be Charlotte Flair. And that was the plan all the way up until the morning of when one of the producers walked up to Vince and was like, you have Edge winning and Charlotte winning. You're not building any new characters. Yep. And that's Agreed. and that's when he's like, okay, you're right. Make it Bianca. Yeah. Like, but it's like you need you need to be elevating something. Yeah. And and it felt like they were so focused. They were so focused on like the core five that were gonna be the Avengers. Yep. All the way into Endgame, and it's like they wasted a lot of what would have been Phase Three, yep. where they could have still been building towards Endgame while still mm-hmm. elevating characters. But like they really did, like they're not using Doctor Strange to his full capabilities. No. Like I agreed that like Black Panther probably would have been used a yeah. little bit more. I'm in, I'm but... interested in Ant Man. See, I love the Ant Man movies. I, I think they're. Fun. I think that there are a lot of. But again, it's it's I can I feel like I can watch the Ant Man movies Without, out of context. Yes, I agree, and it's what makes the Guardians movies watchable yep. for me. I don't need yep. to know everything else that's happening at that point. I don't need to remind myself what movies came before this yeah. to figure out where we're at. They can be standalone movies. And and even I think they forget that they're everything leading up to even Endgame, for the most part, was still a standalone movie that yep. just like little bits and pieces yep. were there. So I don't know. It's it's tough, but I still think that Shazam is a fun movie. Shazam's a fun movie. I don't I think just... that it's again. We talked about it with Love Actually. It's not one that I'm watching every no. year. No, I probably won't watch. I'll probably watch it once every five years. I'll but... watch Shazam when you're like, hey, you want to talk about Shazam again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it could not because it's bad because it's just to me, even the first time I watched it, I was like, that exists. Like, I don't hate that I watched that. And that's what I need sometimes. I just need like, I don't I did not hate that I watched that. I think as two people that are engrossed in the horror community, I think they they fall into this as well as when they see a horror movie. That's just okay. Yeah. They just get so many bad ones that. This okay movie has become the greatest fucking thing. Best one ever that's ever been made, Dylan. Because I will say, and I was going to say this in the car ride, I don't understand people's fascination with Megan. I thought it was boring so, as fuck. So like, I haven't seen Megan. <laughs> yeah. But here was my thought from what I've heard about Megan. Yeah. Which was, why are so many people accepting of Megan that also fucking shit all over the Child's Play remake in yeah. 2019? It's the same movie. <laughs> it's the same exact movie, except the Child's Play remake is better. Yeah. It, like, like I, I loved that And movie. arguably takes place around Christmas time because someone yeah. definitely gets killed taking that's down Christmas right. lights. <laughs> all right, guys, that's coming. Next October, we're definitely talking about the Child's Play remake. Um, but yeah, I don't. This movie just exists, and yep. that's okay. That's not a bad thing. Things can be yeah. fine. And I'm we really... would not be talking about this if not for the fact that I found out that the 50 year yeah, anniversary. Exactly. Just, I was like, hey, this is something that's low energy yep. that we can talk about. And it was it was a good it was a good it's something I threw on. And, yeah. and I, I came it was unfortunate that it was right off the tails of another yeah. two hour long. Movie. Yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but like it was a movie that when I would get home from rehearsal and I'd be like, I'm gonna watch 30 minutes of this before I go to bed. Yeah, and I would just and you could you could definitely split this up into 30 minute chunks. Good flick. 
I don't know what happens next because I know. I think, unfortunately, ba- Black Adam. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so Black Adam. Because I think they hint at him with the wizard. Yeah, right? Black Adam's tied to Shazam. Shazam, and I think that that's the character the wizard talks about, where he's like, "I gave the power to the wrong person yeah. once before." And so, well, Black Adam came out. And I didn't watch it. And everybody's yeah. everybody says it's awful. It's pretty bad. I watched okay. it. It was on HBO Max, so I was yeah. like, "Let me see how bad this shit is." So it's, it's I didn't bad. watch it, but I have been following the saga of Dwayne the Rock Johnson, who was apparent like apparently was supposed to make a cameo in Shazam two, and was like, "Nah, fuck that, bro. I'm not a cameo guy." Yeah. <laughs> to which my thought is like, "Did you not know what you were signing up for?" <laughs> so we've got Shazam two. I don't know if it's well, out we're gonna get that point. crazy caterpillar. I hope. I hope so. I don't know if it's out at this point. I think it's in March when Shazam Two starts. Yeah, I I it have drops. gotten so off of what release schedules are. Everything's Same. falling apart, man. But like, so I think this is the last DC EU movie until James Gunn comes in and is like, "Fuck you." Like- but you know what? In all honesty. I think Shazam's going to be fine under James Gunn. You th- but do you th- so I, does- I think that this fit. I think this is one of the few films that fits in along with his like versions of everything squad? else with his Suicide Squad and his Peacemaker. Like, do they keep Zach Levi? That I don't know, but I I think that the tone of Shazam is hopefully a little bit more of where they go with the tone across the DCU. I don't need it to be Marvel Part yeah. 2.0, but like I am so over the like black and white colors and like yeah. just dour sad melodramatic uh, that's everything why i was i thought the batman was another one that i was like this is fine i i liked the batman for i think colin farrell kicked fucking ass that's what i mean i think that it's i but, think that there is there is not a bad performance to be found in that movie yeah and i think that it for starters like we're gonna we could take this off the air for yeah. most of it, but it's the only fucking detective Batman movie where he's a fucking detective. <laughs> true. I'll give That's him credit true. for that. It still, again, did need to be three hours no, long. No, it did not. But you know what? I I remember seeing that in theaters and actually feeling like the stress and anxiety levels that they wanted you to yeah. be feeling because it's like, man, this shit could happen. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was like a fucked yeah, up. Yeah. Like you're yeah. watching. It's like. The idea that some fucked up incels just like band together on the internet and do some really fucked yep. up shit, like not unreasonable. Not, and watching in a movie not. theater after a Batman shooting a couple years earlier in a movie yeah. theater, like it was an intense. You can definitely see this happening. Yeah, like it's like it was stressful. So I think it. Yeah. I think it's a good movie. Is it one I'm going to pop on on a regular <laughs> basis? Absolutely not. I hope. James Although Gunn- Zoe Kravitz is just delightful Perfect. of a human being. Um, I think. God, I really wish they would have renewed that high fidelity TV show. Oh, it's so good. Oh, so fucking good. I hope James Gunn comes in and is basically like, guys, why do we make all these fucking superhero movies two to three hours? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's do some brisk 90 minute features. Dude, here. love it. Love it. Dude, we, need, we did a movie for horror movie night the other night. It was 87 minutes. God, I love it. I was like, oh, such bliss. <laughs> It could be the worst movie in the world. It's 87 minutes. It's over. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Nothing's like that anymore, man. Well, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> I Captain Marvel you all the time. <laughs> Shazam! Whoa. Oh, whoa. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.